Check out what I got in the mail today. A real life professional grade stainless steel perforated vacuum casting flask made in Taiwan. This is the biggest one I could order and it cost 134 bucks. Now the thing about this kind of flask is that it's designed to go inside the vacuum chamber. It seals along this rim and all the air is drawn out to give you a higher quality cask. But that means I gotta make a vacuum casting setup for this flask. So let's go get some metal. I'll see what kind of scrap metal I can find here. So this is what I got. I had a piece of pipe the right diameter. Unfortunately, it's aluminum. Not unfortunately, but it's more expensive. So I picked up an aluminum plate and that will be the top and bottom. Now the idea is the flask will fit perfectly. That's actually really perfectly. First thing I'm gonna do is cut my plate in half. Now originally I was gonna put a plate on the top and the bottom, but since the flask fits so well in the pipe, I'm only gonna need to make a bottom plate for this apparatus. The pipe was just longer than I needed, so I decided to cut some off to make it a more manageable size. I had access to a bandsaw and thought that would give a nice even cut, but unfortunately this bandsaw wasn't quite big enough, so I had to keep rotating the pipe. It worked okay, but then the blade broke. I managed to replace the blade without losing an eye, but it was close. So it's a little more manageable size now. Because I had to rotate it, there was a little tip that didn't quite match, so I used my belt sander to sand it smooth. So I've got a three quarter inch thread here, and I'm going to attach this vacuum gauge with a port on the end there. The vacuum gauge isn't necessary, but I just kind of want to see what vacuum I'm going to be pulling. So I need to drill a hole in here and get this attached in there. I figured I could use my drill press, but the pipe is just a little bit too big for this little guy. So I had to use my electric hand drill, but the bit I had wasn't quite big enough, so I had to use some creative license to get the hole big enough. When you don't have the right tool, it takes lots of tools. Now, I'm going to tack weld my pipe to the bottom plate. Not to act as a seal, but just to hold it on there so when I pick it up, it doesn't fall off. Now, I've learned how to weld steel, but this is my first time trying aluminum, and it's totally different. All right, so TIG welding aluminum is apparently a whole different deal, so I gotta go do some research here. So after some internet research, I fiddled with my machine settings, and I was just trying to get it to stick. So that's my first aluminum tack, and there's my last aluminum tack. Aluminum definitely wouldn't be my first choice for doing this. I'm kinda regretting the aluminum right now. So it looks like a bird turd, but at least it sticks together. Now for the sealant, I'm going to use silicone caulk. I could have used any caulk, but I used the high temperature, even though this is an area that's going to be exposed to high heat. So hopefully that'll be airtight. Now one of the most important parts is going to be the seal for the flask. So I really want to make sure that's flat and level. For about $15, I got this sheet of high temperature silicone rubber. And I'm going to seal it on there with some of the silicone rubber again. I pressed it onto another metal plate so I know it would be nice and flat. And again sealed it with the silicone caulk. Probably should have screwed that on before I welded the plate. Oh well. I trace the outer edge of the flask and then cut a hole for it to fit into. Now 
for a pump, I got this. So I got this brand new vacuum pump off of eBay. Pulls eight CFM, so eight cubic feet per minute. I think that should be big enough for me. And it's a two stage, so it should pull plenty deep vacuum. For vacuum casting, you don't need so much need a deep vacuum as a lot of air going through. So I think eight CFM should do it. First thing I'm seeing is it says, the temperature of the pumped gas should not exceed over 80 degrees Celsius. That's not gonna happen. So I guess we're gonna be testing the limits of this thing. So that's going to be pumping air hotter than 80 degrees Celsius. Now they sell pumps that are oilless, but I got the kind that uses oil. So I'll fill that up and I'll periodically have to change it. Okay, everything should be set here and this should hold a seal. So let's see if it actually does. At first I wasn't getting it to seal, but I thought maybe the silicone was a little too cold. So I took a hair dryer, heated it up, and then it seals just fine. Now we'll use some packing tape to seal up all the holes so I can fill it with investment. FYI, make sure you tape it really well. Now I did not tape mine very well, so when I poured the investment in, it leaked all out inside my new vacuum chamber. I tried to patch it with clay, but that didn't work. So I just went with it, vacuumed all the air out of the investment, and I had to retape it before the investment solidified. Then I just dumped it back in. And after all that, I finally get to set it up, melt some metal, and see if this thing works. My tongs got stuck in between the flask. Apparently there's a learning curve to everything. Even though the pour went well, unfortunately the vacuum gauge isn't moving. It's not sealed, so it's not actually drawing a vacuum. I tried to press the flask into the silicone so it would create a seal, but even that didn't work. Looking at the seal, there's all kinds of crud that got in the way. The seal's actually melted, so the flask is just too hot. There's pieces of investment that got in the way, so it never got closed. We'll assess the casting and then regroup to see how to fix this. So did that turn out? Yeah, it turned out pretty well in spite of not pulling an actual vacuum. But you can see there's a big defect there, and there's a couple spots where there's just small little pinholes that I'll have to repair. I can repair it, but that's the kind of thing I'm hoping to avoid with the vacuum casting. So we're gonna have to try this again. So I get everything prepped, get the animals sprued up, and this time I'm gonna make sure I clean every little scrap of investment off the outer edge of the flask so nothing gets in there. And I'm gonna make a new gasket with this liquid high temperature rubber. This time we can see a good strong vacuum was drawn. So that time it worked perfectly. You can see the surface finish is nice and smooth all along the body. There's no defects in any of the important places. There is one small hole that'll be super easy to tack up and fill in. The rest of it is just perfect. For the gasket, I just used some of this high temperature gasket maker and I actually put it on there wet before I put the flask in there and it sealed right up. So I have to replace a gasket every time because it burns up with this. That's not the end of the world. This stuff isn't that expensive and it cleans off fairly easy too. So we're not done yet. 
Say for example, I'm using a flask that isn't perforated. In that case, I need a table. So what I did is I took a sheet of plate steel and drilled a hole in it. And what I should be able to do is put some of the sealer over there, take the steel plate and set it right on top. That should create a seal. And I should be able to just make a seal on top of the plate. And now I have a casting table. But let's give it a try. So I added more gasket maker to the rim and tested it out to make sure it was keeping a seal. I had traced where the rim of the flask would be so I knew where to draw the silicone rubber. Then I lowered it directly on the liquid gasket. You could see it was definitely pulling a vacuum. Not quite as strongly as the other one though. I wanted to try one more time, but this time with a square flask. Most of my flasks are just cheap square tubing or old pipe. So I wanted to see if it would work on something a little more odd. I was a little surprised at how strongly that silicone holds on to things. Some of the investment even broke off when I removed the flasks. So that kind of glues itself to the investment pretty good. But it should scrape right off. So the six inch flask was a lion. And I've done these before and I'll pour it and there'll be a bubble right in the lip or right in the eye and it just kind of ruins it. But this one is perfect. There's not a pinhole in there. It's just beautiful. And this one in the square flask was a small trilobite. The investment was kind of thin on top and it had a hairline crack and the vacuum sucked it through the crack. But I'll file that off and the rest of it is flawless. The top side cleans off fairly easily. The bottom ring pulled off with it. And that's fine. Generally, I'll see people lay pads of silicone down on here. But when I've done that in the past, I've always had a hard time getting it to seal and it burns up. I haven't seen anybody use this this way before, but it seems to be working. So I'm gonna keep doing that. You can let me know what your thoughts are on that, but so far it's working. Now, if I don't always wanna use a six inch flask, I can get rings to size it down and do the same thing. I could use a five inch flask or a four inch flask. Most of the stuff I do, I'm lucky to fit into something this big. So, so far this thing's working out beautifully and I'm really happy I made it. Let me know what your thoughts are. Come on back. We got some cool stuff we're gonna do with this. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.